was the biggest light bulb moment of my writing and my research. Specifically, I researched the five stages of grief, which I already kind of knew a little bit about, but as I studied it, I realized that there is so much that God uses in these stages, and I had a lot to learn about how to heal from my hurt and how to recover from my loss. Hi, and welcome back to the final week of the WomenLivingWell.org book club. My name is Courtney Joseph Alec, and I am the author of the book Still Standing, and this week you completed your reading to the end of the book and the section you read. The final five chapters are some of my favorite chapters because you read about friendship fallouts and church hurts and how to heal our wounds and recover from our loss. And you know, none of us get through this life unscathed. All of us have been hurt by other people in our lives. And it starts early in life, in elementary school even, or sometimes even before elementary school. And so while some of the hurt that we have experienced is accidental, maybe people have said things they didn't even realize that they said that cut us to the core, there are other hurts that we feel like they were intentional. Like this person knows what they have done to me and they don't care. And it is so hard to recover from these deep wounds. And so I wanna talk about that today. I have heard it said that rejection distorts our perception of our value. It cuts the core of our identity. And so we need healing. But what often happens is that we focus on that hurt and on that person who has left us rather than on the one who says that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. And so we don't get healing. Instead, we stay stuck in this loop of playing that hurt over and over in our minds and that darkness keeps us stuck. And so we need to decide today, will we may let it make us bitter or are we going to get better? You know, I already had experience in life, a lot of other hard things, complex things, but nothing compared to what I was facing when he left me for another woman. And like, this was like the ultimate t test. It was like Satan was dangling in front of me, the temptation to act crazy, to act out on all of my hurt and my pain, to try to hurt others. And so I remember as I went through my divorce, getting a lot of black and white advice. People were just telling me, well, you should do this. You should do that. You should cut them off. And I was like, wait a minute, you don't understand. Like this is so much messier and complex than it appears. I don't know what you're facing today, but I am guessing that you have some relationships that are messy and complex. And that perhaps you've sat with other friends who've given you advice and to them it's very simple and easy. They're like, just do this, this, and this. And you're like, no, you don't understand. This is much harder than it appears and you know scripture does give us a lot of black and white principles principles like we need to forgive others right but living this out on a daily basis especially when someone continues to hurt us is hard to navigate first corinthians 13 is the love passage in this passage we find a description of what love is and the very first description it says in first corinthians 13 verse 4 that love is patient Patient means to be long suffering. It means to endure for a long time. But how long are we supposed to endure? Jesus did not have good relationships with everyone. They killed him. And he had a lot of conflict in his life that we see. And yet he didn't get nasty. He didn't get mean. We want to be like Christ. You see, there'll always be people that rub us the wrong way, who criticize us or who maybe hurt us. All relationships are a risk. And so in our neighborhood, in our church, in our workplace, in our family, we are going to deal with complex situations and sometimes very deep wounds. And so when it is serious, when we are suffering, a friendship fall out and the darkness is coming for us, what do we do? During the separation from my husband, I knew that there were consequences for every word and every action that I took during that delicate time, I knew my kids were watching me and I was not about to lose my testimony. I was not about to lose 
their respect as they watched my every move and my every response to their dad. And so God was very gracious in my life. He helped me. He was very faithful and he gave me wisdom. But the way I got that was by pushing out all the noise and a lot of the advice of other people and really going into deep prayer with God and following his principles, studying God's word. And yes, his principles are black and white, but I also followed the Holy Spirit as he guided me into how to follow the principles that I was learning in God's word. It was messy and it was complex, but I was in it for the long game. I couldn't get caught up in my emotions um, in the short run. And so this took self-control, this took patience, and this took endurance. While plenty of people gave me advice, I had to know at the end of the day what God's word says. And I also knew my experience inside and out. And so I needed to know how God's word was speaking into my life experience. I also needed to know how the enemy works and how to use the sword, the word of God, against the enemy to defeat him. And so that is what this book, Still Standing, is all about. And I want this for you. And so I can't cover all of the principles that I wrote about in the last five chapters of this book in this video today. So if you don't have this book, you need to get it because it is meant to be a resource and a tool to help you through the friendship fallouts and the church hurt and the wounds that you have experienced. But I do want to touch on one point in the book, chapter 19. As I was writing this chapter, this was the biggest light bulb moment of my writing and my research. Specifically, I researched the five stages of grief, which I already kind of knew a little bit about, but as I studied it, I realized that there is so much that God uses in these stages, and I had a lot to learn about how to heal from my hurt and how to recover from my loss. As a believer, each of these stages felt very difficult to go through because they felt unspiritual. I mean, the very first stage of grief is denial. That is not a place that a believer is to live in right we live in truth and the second stage is anger again not a place that we really want to be right as a believer and so what happens I think for a lot of us is that we uh, get wounded we get hurt and then we begin to act like we're fine but we are spiritually bypassing everything that God wants us to go through so that we can actually experience true healing we try to act like superhero Christians and that is so unhealthy and it will catch up with us. Grief as a believer is something to move into, not away from. And so in Bible times, they grieve for sometimes weeks and even months. And some of our relationship losses are like a death and they are permanent and we're forced to learn how to live with a loss. And so the light bulb moments for me when I researched it was that in stage one, that the denial that I was facing was actually from God, a gift from God. While I was in disbelief that my wonderful husband could do such a thing, my friends and my family, they wanted to shake me. They wanted to wake me up because they loved me and they wanted me to take action. But the initial emotion of denial, the Lord uses to emotionally protect us. Without denial, I would have been flooded with more emotions than I could have ever handled at once. Denial gave me time to process my pain so I did not absorb it at the intensity that it was coming at me. And so it was a hidden blessing at the start, but we cannot stay in denial, right? And so I moved into that second stage, which was anger. And so this is when the intensity finally hits you and you are ticked off, right? Have you been there? Sometimes it's at the other person. Sometimes it's at God. And the first five chapters of my book are kind of a lot of what I experienced during this stage too. And so again, people will spiritualize it. They'll try to help you escape it by saying, Hey, God's going to use this and all things work together for good. And while those statements are true, I was mad and I was hurt and it was hard and I needed to go ahead and just run on the treadmill as hard as I could. It was a very lonely time and so we don't want to stay in this unhealthy place. We move into stage three at this point and that is bargaining. And so this is when we are in such intense pain that we will do anything to get out of it. As a matter of fact, oftentimes this is when people make life altering bad decisions sometimes. And so to get out of our pain, sometimes we, you know, buy something beyond our means, or maybe people get married on a whim, anything to get out of the pain. And so as long as we don't do anything that we regret during this season and we practice self-control, God is using this stage to give us glimmers of hope 
that there is change ahead, that maybe we can make it through. And so when the reality of, though, of that loss remains and we aren't able to undo it and we aren't able to change it, that is when we slip into stage four, which is depression, deep sadness, and loneliness. During this time, we tend to withdraw. And so I withdrew a lot. I mean, this is when I stopped serving at my church. Uh, some people question that, like, what is she doing? Why is she not being like she normally was? But I was not able to keep going on like I was married. And so in this season, this is when we lose our sense of normalcy. The world is like kind of turned upside down and nothing that was normal was before. And God is using this once again as a protection to move me forward to help me face the reality that my husband was gone forever and so normalcy is lost during the stage but it makes way for new patterns to develop and that is where this hope is in this stage if you have a friend who has suffered a loss and maybe she seems depressed and you're concerned about her i want you to ask yourself is what she is depressed about depressing if the answer is yes, then you need to sit with her. You need to love her, cry with her, hug her, take her a meal, bring her flowers, send her a text message. Be with her in that sadness because it is required. It's a part of the healing process. And I came to the point where I cried so much that I was like, I literally cannot shed another tear over this loss. And that is when age five began. And this is acceptance. This is a stage where we experience healing. I literally felt different on the inside. And I, I had a hope for a brighter future. And so the loss made me get teary at times, but it no longer was dictating my daily emotions or my daily decisions. You see stage five acceptance is unlike stage one denial because you're not pretending that it didn't happen. No, you have worked through the pain and you have processed it and you're living in reality and you are forever changed by your loss but God has restored your joy and restored your hope and you are still standing and so in closing I want to say thank you for joining me for this book club I pray that it has encouraged you and if it has consider maybe giving it to a friend who needs it or if you have an extra minute and you could leave a positive review wherever you purchase the book that will help the book to get into the hands of other women who need it too and remember life is full of new beginnings even when we're old and so it may feel like this dark valley will never end but be assured it will end god is with you and so do not be passive in the darkness push it out rise up and as first corinthians 15 58 says it says stand firm let nothing move you keep walking with the king